Kira. How's What's it going? up? Hey, <laughs> welcome to uh, welcome to Orange. Um, awesome, you came here. How unexpected. Um, shall I give you a tour? Let's do it. <laughs> So welcome. This is the this is the foyer. Um, this is our this is our bar. But remember, we're a recording studio, so let's uh, let's keep going this way. Um, this is our second foyer. It just kind of um, detaches the various studios and rooms and things. So I'll take you through into it's our piano booth. A little bit sort of storagey. Um, this is our piano. This is our nice uh, um, piano. This is our big room, and hey, this is this is actually Chris, our studio manager. So, hey, Chris. Um, ah, uh, hello. I was not expecting you. <laughs> Welcome. I'm Chris. This is the big room. This is what I like to call the hub of the operation. So, if we have a band recording in here, it's large, so we can fit lots of horns, lots of instruments. And we also have these breakout rooms so we can isolate bass guitars, vocalists, drums, anything really. Speaking of the live stuff that we do in here, so one thing that we one thing that we set out to do when we rebuilt this place, because we were in Armagh Street uh, before the earthquake, when we, when we rebuilt this place, we wanted to make it big enough to host audiences so we can record bands live and film and do that. It's a really uh, really efficient way to record an album. So let me um, introduce you, Charlotte, who runs all this stuff. Hey, Hello. Charlotte. <laughs> Do you, want to tell, do you want to tell the people on YouTube what's, um, uh, what you're up to? Well, I am editing a video of a band that we had here. Uh, it's jazz. Yeah. Yeah. We've had lots of comedy. Internet scroll! Hides under a bridge and never posts under his um, theatre shows. You name it. If you're in Christchurch, you should totally go to orangestudios.co.nz slash live and get yourself on the mailing list and find out about all the stuff that's that's coming up here. This, this is the South Studio as well, by the way. This is like our second recording space too. So um, it's a small space. There's a window that goes through into the piano booth. Um, we tend to do sort of more the sequencing stuff and um, the uh, arranging and um, things like that. Just the, the smaller, smaller things, um, film, TV. Um, stuff like that as well. So come through here to the West Studio. So we'll just walk through the big room, um, uh, which you've uh, seen before, and you can see just here on my right, your left. This is this is the West Studio. The window's through to the West Studio, and we can actually go inside there by walking through this door. In fact, these two doors. It's two doors because it's uh, this is separate structure. This is the thing I was talking about before. So quite often we might have like a rehearsal going on out there, or like a dance lesson or something and then we we shut it all up and there's like a vocal recording going on in the west studio so we've kind of uh, designed the place to be modular so it can have all sorts of things going on at the same time so we're standing in the drum booth at the moment but it's kind of the anything booth at the moment it's kind of like another storage booth i guess um and we'll walk through walk through this way please and this is the vocal booth um, a little bit deader in here, you can probably hear the sound of my voice getting a little bit less echoey. Um, that's because we've got carpet and more curtains around, so it's kind of a good environment for vocals or um, some other instruments. Um, let's keep going, come through, and this is the. This is the. Yeah, oh, uh, just get another take of that, please. Um, this is the control room. This is what happens in here. This is our M32, which is great for the live recordings we do because we, we take the iPad into the big room and we mix it live or if we're recording then the people in the different rooms can, can, uh, can adjust their own mixing their headphones and things like that so that's all that's all pretty cool so that's all patched in from here this um, this this patch bay we've got about a hundred or so um, 
uh, channels coming in from around, I have 120 channels coming from around the studio. Um, so that's all good and that's our computer. Um, and as you can see, Chris and Charlotte are very hard at work um, because that is that is we that is what we we work very hard and we don't have very much fun at all here. So that is the that is control room one. This is the heart of things, and obviously where we record our live concerts and stuff as well. And um, but most importantly, more importantly than the studio, um, come and um, come and see our favourite piece of equipment which is our saxophone, um, our saxophone beer tap. So, uh... Would you like a drink? That'd be lovely. Alright. <laughs> Cool. So, Michael, tell me what it is you guys do here. What kind of things happen at Orange Studio? Okay, so uh, so we were firstly a recording studio, like uh, about 11 years ago. We yeah. set up to, well, actually more just general music production. So I was um, originally sequencing backings and things like that. Now we are still a recording studio, kind of firstly, but we've started um, specializing in live recordings so we've built the place to uh, to record bands live and we um, we also just really want to be part of the music community in Christchurch in New Zealand um, just a place where uh, people come and hang out basically. The first time I came here was two or three years ago yeah. you've started a lot of new stuff since then how did you go from studying music to running possibly the coolest music studio in Christchurch? Um, well, I was really interested, so I, um, I studied at RO Music Arts yeah. um, and I was very interested in the recording side of things. You're a musician yourself, you've worked with a lot of artists over the years. What advice would you give to up and coming young musicians who think they might like to have a career as an artist or someone behind the scenes? Right, right, cool. Um, well, I think it is a totally awesome career. If you're passionate about it, if you love it, then it's something that you totally should do. There's a bit of a stereotype, I suppose, everywhere in the world that um, that the arts industries are kind of lower paid and all that kind of stuff. But what you have to do is do your very best to learn how to make it work one way or another and a lot of the time it really is it, it, it is achievable just have an open mind so if you're a guitarist um, a career might not necessarily be um, traveling from stadium to stadium performing in a band it might be playing on a session one day teaching guitarists uh, you know having some students the next day um, doing a background gig at the local bar the next day just have an open mind it could look really different to how you imagine but definitely go for it it's it's totally worth it and uh, somebody said if you Love the job you do. You'll never work a day again in your life, and I think that's pretty much um, that's pretty much the music industry. All right, three questions. Yes. Three questions. I'm sure you've had quite the range of gigs come through here since this started. What was your favourite job to work on? Your most unusual job you've worked on, and what job would you like to get the chance to work on? Oh wow. Okay. Um, I uh, I really I don't. Th I think I have a favourite or unusual job because I really love pretty much all the jobs that I've worked on in all different sorts of ways. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I'm sorry, that's a really boring answer. Um, but yeah, I mean, a couple of recent highlights. Um, Rebecca Nelson, who is a singer that I've been working with since actually pretty much before day one of the studio, um, who has uh, just releasing her latest album on Sony Music this week. So check that out um, if you're into popera. Um, popera. Popera. It's, uh, what is pop? It's like um, classical pop crossover. Um, cool. So uh, I don't know, like you know, dream a dream. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> it's always like that, you know. Yeah. Especially people in generations older than us are real into it. Just finished um, scoring a documentary on sharks. What does a shark sound like? 
what, what kind of music goes with sharks? A good question. Um, the director for this one asked for like a Jaws type feel, so kind of quite, um, quite scary. I guess um, looking at the scary side of sharks. Um, and in terms of unusual jobs, yeah. Uh, they are all, probably more than half the jobs are unusual in some way. What was the final thing? So there was, there was favorite job, unusual job, and what job would you like to get the chance to work on if you could? That's a secret. That's a secret. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not, uh, yeah, no, it's, no, it's not. Um, I just, I mean, I really like the jobs that we have come in actually. So, so yeah, just, just more, yeah, more of that. <laughs> So you set up the studio to be like a flexible and cost effective option for musicians to record in. Yeah. What are some of the things you've done with the space to make it flexible and cost effective? Oh. Like you've got all the rooms, all of the, yeah. the gear, like how do you work it? The size footprint is actually really expensive to keep running. Um, so we've made it, like I was saying before, in four separate structures. So we can basically split the cost between different people at different times. So a band might hire the whole studio to record their album. It's a bit more expensive than a smaller studio, but you can record the whole band at once, which means that you you do one take and you've tracked your song. You also get a better energy with the band as well. Just the give and take as you listen to what other people are uh, playing. It gives you a lot of energy, something to bounce off and it makes the band really tight. So there's less editing and things like that afterwards as well. You only have to pay for the West Studio while you're editing. Um, so it's a lot cheaper that way. So it's just kind of pay for what you use rather than rather than paying for the whole studio for the whole time. Another thing is our Live at Orange series that we do in the evenings. The band will come in and they record the, you know, they record everything in just in one take in front of a live audience of up to 50. And the idea being that number one, it's recorded really quickly because it's all done, you know, in the course of the evening. It, the cost of the recording is subsidized by the tickets sales. So they get people along, everyone sort of pays um, an amount for the ticket and that helps um, with the recording. Um, and then either it's an, a live album that comes out of it or it's tracks that are, um, are you know, or they be a couple of tracks for YouTube, things like that. So that is, that's another way that we're um, trying to keep things um, realistic for artists. Do you, if you record live bands that live at Orange thing, do you ever retrack any bits if they make mistakes or that kind of thing? Mm, good question. Generally no. What you record is kind of what comes out. So they gotta get it perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect. Or kind of use the live thing at the end yeah, as yeah. an excuse. Um, but you know, normally it's a really good one for bands who've been playing their set for a long time to, to get it down and normally you know, it is actually pretty much perfect, and sometimes we do a wee bump here and there, so you'd be like, oh, that was perfect, apart from when that guitarist played C, it was supposed to be B, you know, <laughs> and we're like, whoop, and it's like, sweet. Um, and sometimes, if we really want to get get really deep into an album and make a really serious live album, then yeah, we will actually do more editing and, you know, sometimes set the microphone up the same way if we just need to redo a, you know, a couple of lines with the vocalist forgot and something like that. So yeah, we have, we have been known to, um, to edit, especially for the really serious live albums. Well, that was fun. Later in the week I went back and recorded a band who had come down from Auckland and was doing a live at Orange Session. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a like, go give some love to the Orange channel, check out their website. And I'll see you guys next week. Also, how epic is that beer tap?